All right, you have learned a lot about JavaScript so far, such as variables, strings, numbers, and conditional statements. In fact, what you have learned so far is quite enough to put together a complete JavaScript application that we can use in a real life on a daily basis. So now let's make use of all the JavaScript knowledge you have gained so far to create a simple but very interesting game application. It's called Word Guessing Game. To start this coding challenge, first download the course folder from the link in the description below, unzip it and open it with your favorite code editor. Here I'm using Visual Studio Code. From the course folder, open the exercise folder called JavaScript Conditional Statements. And then open the index.html file using Google Chrome. In the index.html file, remember to link the game.js file. In game.js, you'll find the step-by-step -step instructions for this coding challenge created by JavaScript comments. So let's go through what you need to do. The game app should ask five word guessing questions. You'll store the guess to each question in a variable. The game also needs to keep track of the number of words the player guessed correctly using a variable. And there's a hint. You can use the addition assignment operator for this. For example, if a player guessed right, use reassignment to assign the current number of correct guesses plus one to the variable you create here in step one. Then the game needs to assign a badge to the player. If the player guessed all five words correctly, give that player a diamond badge. 3 to 4 is a gold badge, 1 to 2 is a silver badge, and 0 correct is no badge. Please keep track of the badge name with the variable you created here in step 2. Finally, the game needs to write a message to the current page after the game is over. The message will let the player know the number of guesses they got right and the name of their badges. You can display the badge name below or next to the number of correct guesses. Notice how you are asked to select the main element in index.html. This is where you'll display the final message. The goal is to get your game to work similar to this. In the next part, I'll share my solution with you. Good luck, have fun, and remember, practice makes perfect. Hopefully you were able to manage all the steps successfully, if not, that's okay. As I mentioned earlier, learning how to program takes certain period of consistent learning and practice. Now I'll walk through my solution with you. First I define a variable named correct guesses to store the number of correct guesses. I set this to zero because when the game begins, zero words have been guessed. As players start the game, I'll add one to this variable for each word guessed correctly. That's why I use the let keyword instead of const. At the end of the game, the total number of correct guesses stored in this variable. Next, I declare the variable named badge to store the final score level of a player. For example, diamond, gold, silver, or no badge. I didn't assign it to value yet because later, I'm going to put a string value in it based on how many words the player guessed correct. In this case, since I know that the value will be a string, I can also assign an empty string like this. To display the final message and player's badge inside the main element, I use the document.querySelector method to access the main element and store it in the variable called mainElm. The next part of the program asks five word guessing questions using the prompt method. I defined five different variables to store the value from each prompt dialog that asks different questions. Asking a question and testing the response is really the heart of the program. To test if a response is correct, first I use the to uppercase method to convert the player's input to all uppercase letters, so that even if the player typed the word using all lowercase letters, or all uppercase letters, or any combination, the condition will evaluate to true. Then if the guess is right, the addition assignment operator adds one to the current value of the correct guesses variable. 
and this part of the program decides the player's badge. I use the conditional statement and comparison operators to assign a badge based on how many words the player guessed right or based on the final value of the correct guesses variable. So first, if correct guesses strictly equals 5, assign the string diamond to the badge variable. Then I ran a second condition with an else if clause. Remember, a player gets a gold badge for three or four correct guesses. So here I'm checking to see if the value in the correct guesses variable is bigger than or equal to three. Now you might be wondering, does this first condition will also evaluate to true if the number of correct guesses is bigger than or equal to three, since five is bigger than three? Well, it won't. And here's why. Remember that an if else statement only runs one code block. Even though there may be multiple options or conditions, the program only ever goes through one. In this case, the first if statement at the top strictly checks for five. So that means if the correct guesses variable has the number five, the program enters this block, runs its code, assigns diamond to a variable badge, and then exits. In other words, if the player guessed five words right, the program will skip all the following blocks, starting from this else if clause. Next, I'm checking to see if the value in the correct guesses variable is bigger than or equal to one. And with the final else clause, I assigned the string none to the badge variable. Finally, the next part displays the result to the current page. It lets the player know how many words they guessed right and the name of the badge they earned. And the results need to display inside a main element. The variable main elm stores a reference to the element, so I use the main elm variable and the inner HTML property to set the HTML markup inside the main element. Then I use the template in the troll to display the correct guessed words message inside h1 tags and the badge message inside h2 tags. I'm using the dollar sign and the curly braces syntax or string interpolation to insert the final value of the correct guesses and the badge variables into the string. This is all very similar to how we display the final message while we're building a character counter app in the previous lecture. All right, let's try this in the browser. I'll save the change. Refresh the page. First, I'll guess all five words correct. And my final result is, you got five out of five words guessed correct, batch earned diamond. Now let's see what happens if I guess two words correct. And this time my final result is, you got two out of five words guessed correct, batch earned silver. Again, there are many different ways to write this program, and this is just one of them. If your solution was different from mine, please feel free to share it in the comment section below. Now you may notice that some part of this program do the same thing over and over, like asking the question and assigning one to the current value of the correct guesses variable, for example. While everything in the program works as expected, there are lots of room for improvement and ways to make the code more efficient. In the next section, I'll teach you how to use JavaScript functions, which provide a more effective way to write and execute code that you want to repeat again and again. And remember, I'm always here to help. If you have any questions about anything covered in this lecture, please feel free to ask in the comment section below.